coming on to the diseases now this is the first case that we will be discussing now there is a newborn immediate newborn which is having respiratory distress severe respiratory distress and on chest x ray this kind of finding is received so what is the diagnosis the diagnosis is congenital diaphragmatic hernia or c d h okay what we see in congenital diaphragmatic hernia there is a newborn which is just born now and the young child is having severe respiratory distress and on x ray as we can see here that there is presence of uh, this uh, small bowel loops and stomach there is presence of there is presence of stomach in the chest this is very important nowadays then in the neat pg people are asking these kind of questions so this diagram is very important to remember now we will discuss the congenital diaphragmatic hernia so the congenital diaphragmatic hernia is also known as the bogdalek hernia bogdalek hernia or posterior lateral hernia okay so this is congenital diaphragmatic hernia which is also known as the bogdalek hernia or the posterior lateral hernia this is a very important topic every year people are asking questions on this topic it is asked in pediatrics also and in surgery also so uh, this is the this bogdalek hernia is the most common type of congenital diaphragmatic hernia and the incidence is 1 in 2000 to 5000 live births okay now another most important question which is repeatedly asked that bag and mask ventilation is contraindicated is contra indicated okay why bag and mask ventilation is contraindicated in congenital diaphragmatic hernia because whenever we will be pushing uh, air through the bag the stomach will also distend and as stomach is in the chest so it will compress lungs and there will be reduced air exchange and there will be more worsening of the respiratory problems so bag and mask ventilation is contraindicated this is very important point now regarding the embryology of the diaphragm and how this congenital diaphragmatic hernia is forming we can see here this is chest this is abdomen this is diaphragm now there is presence of pleuroperitoneal canal in which which forms as a connection between the chest and the abdomen so due to failure of closure of these pleuroperitoneal canals there is herniation of the abdominal contents into the chest during the uh, like pregnancy which leads to lung hypoplasia which leads to respiratory distress in the newborn okay so there is failure of closure of pleuro peritoneal canal 
okay now regarding the clinical features what all are the clinical features okay so it is uh, characterized by a triad of respiratory distress and dextrocardia and scaphoid abdomen okay what is the mnemonic rds so there is respiratory distress which i have already told you along with that because most commonly this hernia is on the left side there is presence of dextrocardia or the shifting of the mediastinum towards the right and the abdomen is empty so there is scaphoid abdomen so this is very important now what is the most important prognostic factor prognostic factor which is most important is the pulmonary hypoplasia it's a pulmonary hypoplasia which is the most important prognostic factor okay now it is associated with polyhydramnios so we can detect during the scans during the pregnancy scans as it is associated with polyhydramnios okay now how to diagnose i have already shown you the picture so the diagnosis is made by chest x ray what we'll see on chest x ray there is the herniation of the multiple bowel loops and the stomach into the chest most commonly on the left side and there is presence of gastric air bubble or the bowel loops or the air fluid levels into the chest so there are presence of multiple bowel loops or gastric air bubble in chest okay and whenever we are trying to insert rail tube we can see the rail tube also coiling into the chest okay now what is the treatment so the treatment is surgical and the surgical treatment is we'll reduce the hernia and we'll close the defect the same method for treating hernias it's also applicable in this case we'll reduce the hernia and then we will close the defect okay now in there is uh, there is another question whether there is any presence of sac so in 90% of the cases there is no sac okay in case if sac present we will excise the sac okay now how we will close the defect normally in adult patients we are using mesh but as in the small child gradually the child grows but the mesh as it is a prosthetic it will not grow so we will prefer using the autologous patch we'll use the autologous prosthetic patch for closure okay okay now there is another topic for related to this congenital diaphragmatic hernia which is morgagni hernia this morgagni hernia is also known as retrosternal hernia or laris hernia 
सो दिस इज मॉर्गैगनीज हरनिया और रेट्रो स्टर्नल हरनिया ओके विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज लैरीज हरनिया नाउ आई विल सजेस्ट यू गाइज टू ऑलवेज ट्राई एंड रिमेंबर टू और थ्री नेम्स ऑफ अ सिंगल डिजीज because majority of the questions are related to the names itself so this morgagni hernia is also known as larry's hernia now this is coming via larry's space okay now where is this larry's space uh, you just see here this is chest this is sternum so here okay here this is what is the larry's space okay so in the larry's space this is because of defective development of central tendon of diaphragm okay there is defective development of central tendon of diaphragm because of which there is a gap which is left between the sternum and the diaphragm it is more common on the right side and anteriorly okay so whereas in the bogdalek hernia it is more common on the left side and posterior lateral this morgagni hernia is more common on the right side and is placed anteriorly now among the uh, bogdalek hernia and morgagni hernia which hernia is more common it is the bogdalek hernia no which vessel passes through the larry's space vessel it is a superior epigastric vessel it is the superior epigastric vessel now what is the organ which is present here most commonly the organ present here is the transverse colon so the most common herniating organ is most common herniating organ here is herniating organ is transverse colon whereas in bogdalek hernia the most common herniating organ is stomach transverse colon now the clinical features in majority of the patients it is asymptomatic symptomatic and we incidentally detect it on chest x ray incidental finding on chest x ray okay now the management is reduction of hernia and closure of the defect so the management of hernia remains the same it is reduction of hernia plus closure of defect okay so this is all about congenital diaphragmatic hernias